Okay, so we have returned and we are going to start uh, what's on tap for today. And that will be uh, substation breakers and what they do in substations for us, what their purpose is and some safety features and all the good business that goes along with the substation breaker. Uh, I'll, I'll ask, you, ask you guys up front, we discussed a little bit when we went out in the field and we uh, took a look at the equipment in the substation. What's its purpose? What, as far as you know right now, what's the purpose of a substation breaker? Protect the equipment. Protect, protect uh, uh, line equipment, right? Yes, sir. All right, so it's the protection of our lines. It's the protection of our equipment out there in the distribution feeder. It's a distribution mm -hmm. circuit breaker. So uh, that, that's its main purpose right there. It also, as a sidebar here, if we have a fault on those circuits or a problem on those circuits or equipment, it stops the fault and it tracks where it's at. So we don't want anything going back into the substation. So, uh, you know, it, it's got that purpose. It, it's an isolation device. It isolates faults and uh, trips and overloads. So I've got a drawing up here and I wanna go through real quick. You guys do understand the difference between these two different uh, occurrences right here. Uh, we've talked about this before. What is a, a fault? How do, we, how do we define a fault on an electrical system? We define it as uh, basically uh, <clears throat> a discrepancy in the cable, something that's not supposed to happen. Okay, so let's go like this. If we have, and there, there are cases of which we have faults, we have a phase to phase. That's when two of our ener energized lines slap together or something goes phase to phase in a piece of equipment. We have phase to ground. Right, where our phase of a primary conductor either falls to the ground or touches a grounded object, the neutral or a case of a transformer or whatnot. Okay, so th those are the two occurrences that we have in faults. Now, what are the characteristics of the fault itself? All right, I'll give you the definition here very high amperage. And they are very intense. When I say intense, you're going to get a big ball of fire and hear a lot E N T N S C. All right. And they are very intense. You're going to see something happening that's explosive. All right. When I say very high amperage, we're out of the normal operating system ranges right here. We're talking. Uh, thousands to tens of thousands of amps. Okay, very, very intense. So that's one occurrence that can happen out on my system. Another thing that can happen out of my system is what they call overload. Whoops. Why am I not drawing? Okay. It's what they call overload. Can anybody give me a definition to that? You really need to know the difference between the two. Fault, phase to phase, phase to ground, very high amperage, very intense. What is overload? Um, overload is uh, when, the, when the cable has uh, more current than what it can handle. Well, not the cable, but pretty much everything we have on our system. Yes, sir. So if I've got a fuse, 
to do a little math here. It's a 50 amp fuse. For a short term, we can go to 150 amps. I mean, excuse me, 150%. So it'll do 75 amps for a short period. Well, what happens if I put 80 amps through it? Or maybe 100? All right, this is not a fault. I've just added more load to it. That's an overload condition. I've overloaded the capacity of the fuse itself, even when it goes to 150%, All right? Now you said conductor. So I've got a conductor size of this. It's capable of handling 200 amps and I push it 250, maybe 275. That's overloading the conductor. It's not a fault. I don't have face to face or face to face in my condition, but I am overloading it. Typically, when I do that, it's going to sag real low or I melt, might melt down connections in it. It's going to get very, very hot. Okay? So we've got to know the difference between fault and overload. That's going to be coming up. Fault, face to face, face to ground, very intense. Overload means I'm going over the specifications of either the conductor, fuse, or equipment that I have out there in the field. Any questions there? No. All right, good. Uh, yeah, question, question. Sure. But I mean, they are related in the sense to where a fault can cause an overload, correct? Or am I wrong? A fault is a fault, an overload is an overload. You, you need to know, as far as the industry is concerned, the difference between the two. Roger. And you're going to have to know how to discriminate between the two. Roger. Okay. All right. So I've got Roger. a fuse. I'm just going to draw a fuse out right here. And I'm going to draw another fuse out right here. All right. This is going to, I'm going to fault this first one. So the characteristics I want to see in the fuse is pretty much the fuse is going to be destroyed. There's going to be some kind of explosion. Very, very fast, very, very intense. I might go to the fuse barrel and it's just gonna be blown apart, the fuse inside the barrel itself. On an overload, I probably won't hear any noise. It's just gonna melt. So they call right. melted fuse. All right, the barrel's gonna fall open, not really an event. I'm, I'm gonna have power out, but it's just gonna melt out. That's because I just went a little bit over the rating of the fuse and its capacity. You're going to need to know that out there in the field. Okay. Does fault, whenever I have overload, did a fault occur? Not always. N never. Okay. Good answer, Lucas. It, it never occurred. I just went over the load of what that piece of equipment specified for. When I have a fault, something major has happened. Conductor has cut, touched conductor. A phase has gone to ground. Something inside that transformer is faulted out. It's faulting on itself. The, uh, you guys remember that video that we showed where the guy was fusing the uh, bayonet transformer and all the oil came out? Yes. Okay. Rem I could hear the rumble. There was a fault inside that transformer, all right, that made that transformer bad, not overload. If I had put the fuse in and that thing started humming for a little bit and then it melted the fuse out, that would be overload. But there was a fault internally to that transformer. Okay. So we know the difference between the two. All right. So get back over here and clear this off. The all drawings. Okay. So substation breakers are, are designed uh, for distribution and tap line protection. And I do understand this. I'll put this drawing back up. Uh, Professor V, there are different schemes on different systems. So I've got my feeder line comes out. We all know what feeder line is. That's the main line off the breaker, right? I might have a fuse for a transformer. 
and I might have a fuse for a tap line, the breaker right here is protection for both the feeder and everything that taps off of it. Okay? The breaker and the technology in the breaker, if you have it set up correctly, is faster than fuses. We'll talk more, more about uh, fuse saving, fuse blowing in a little bit, but I've got full protection even on my fuse portions of my circuits. Okay. All right. Uh, let's get rid of that. All right. So thus far, we've talked about what kind of breaker, distribution or transmission? Repeat the question. About what, thus far, we talked about distribution breakers or transmission breakers. Distribution. We've been in a what kind of substation? Distribution substation, right? Yes, sir. Yeah. Okay, thank you very much. Transmission, <laughs> because some of you guys might go to transmission, it depends on what you apply for. They have the same purpose, but they act a little bit differently. When I have a breaker in a distribution substation, I come off of it, I go you know, around corners and turns, and then I come to this right here. What does this designate? Open switch. An open switch. Oh. So a distribution feeder, distribution now, is typically radial. I go out to a point and I stop. Now, of course, I might have tap lines here and transformers here. Everything's attached to it. But I come out to a point and stop. Transmission is different. I've got a generating station. Just because you guys like to use it. I've got my switch yard, okay? Transmission, and I'm gonna do this simplistic. Of course, this is not true to geography. Transmission does a little bit different. Okay. At each one of those entry and exit points, you see these little square boxes right here? The big box is the substation. The little box is a breaker for each phase. Right? Distribution is radial. I go out to a point and stop. Transmission is what? Two Mac, I got a question. Go ahead, bud. So then three transmission lines that go into the substation, are those um three more primary, secondary also, or are they just transmission is transmission, just like you saw at the substation. Three that's, phases that's, of transmission voltage. That's what I was wondering. Okay. Three phases okay. of transmission voltage. All right. All right, so if distribution is radial, I go out to a point and stop. What kind of scheme do I have in transmission? I think somebody said it. It's kind of got looped. cut off. Looped. Looped. Okay. I'm looped in transmission. All right. I'm going to give a scenario here. Watch how this happens, guys. I'm going to leave substation one, two, three four, five, six, right here. And like I said, this is just a simple loop, not ge ge geographically correct. A tree falls on this line right here, transmission line. What's gonna happen to these two breakers? Um, they're gonna trip. Right, so this one's gonna trip. Mm -hmm. And this one's gonna trip. How much power is out? All of it. Anybody else? 
None of it. None of it. There is no power out. Okay. That's why transmission uses this type of scheme right here. When I have a trip here, I draw a line here, and a trip here, I draw a line here, it's sectionalized and isolated this line section. Generation, watch this direction, is still feeding through the opposite side. Through the opposite side, all the way up to this point, and it's still feeding this one switch yard. Okay. Things to remember here, distribution's radial, transmission is looped, and if I have a fault in a looped section, I don't lose power. Uh, there's a reason, let's see if you guys can think of it. Why do I have my transmission in this fashion? I'm gonna start thinking geographically and distance. Well, you don't, you don't want to make everybody lose power, right? You just want to. Well, that's obvious right there. Yeah. But why do I use it, especially in transmission? Would be a lot more customers affected. Uh, that's great. Great answer. If I did do radio, I'd be losing a ton of customers. I'd be losing full substations. Think geographically, though. Geographically, are we talking about uh, the grid? You still want to be tapped into the grid? Is that All right? Transmission lines, we, we know from this, go a long distance. We knew that from the path. And they are typically not on the road, are they? So you're saying they're, no. going, they're going through, yeah, they're going through woods and swamps and over rivers. I mean, they're very hard to get to. Yeah. Right? So if I have a radial transmission system and I have a fault on it, I, I can, in some cases, it might make take me days to get that back on. Oh, just yeah, it's hard to get to. Yeah, just getting the equipment. First, I got to patrol it and find it. Yeah. And that might be, you know, 30, 50 plus miles. To be able to patrol it might take a helicopter to get that done. And then when I do find it, if it's down in the middle of a swamp in the middle of nowhere, I got to get the equipment together. I got to get the material together. I mean, we're talking a long, long outage. How long was this outage in a loop system? They didn't have one. They didn't have an outage. They didn't have an outage. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So that lets you know why in transmission they use a loop system. Transmission breakers are designed for line isolation between substations to isolate line sections. Okay. All right. Let me know if you guys got questions. I'm tired of getting my mouse around here. All right. So let's start talking about the breaker itself. And we're going to talk about distribution breakers here to start. So let's clear this screen, clear all drawings. All right. So I'm just going to draw you the generic front panel of a breaker. Now you might be tasked with going into a substation and getting information off of here. You need to at least know what does what. So one, two, three, four, five. Okay. The ones are top are what they call phase relays. A, B, and C, those are my phases. I've also got a ground relay, and I have what they call a reclosing relay. Now when a breaker, well, when it trips open, say I've got a fault on A. When it trips open, do I just want to open up A? No. Why not, Lucas? Because it might not necessarily be in a. That's one case. How about everything that's three phase on my circuit? Yeah, that's going to, yeah, anything that's three phase won't have power. Or that's might... right. Yeah, you, you're going to be, um, you're going to be uh, messing up anything that's three phase on there. And even if there was three phase, B and C are going to try to take over. And that's probably mm -hmm. going to overload those other two phases. So when a breaker opens, 
<clears throat> All three phases. All three. Okay. So basically, uh, if you open up A, B, and C, it's going to take all the load that A was providing. And cause an if, if we had a breaker, which they are not designed to do this, if we had a breaker that opened A phase only, mm -hmm. B and C are going to try to assume the A load in three phase situations. Roger, okay. Right? Everybody on A that's single phase is going to lose power. That, the breaker is not designed to do that. The breaker, if I see a fault or, or an overload on A, it's gonna trip all three. All three are gonna open at the same time, okay? It's gonna give you an indication that the fault occurred on that phase, but all three are still gonna trip open. Make sense? Yes, sir. Okay, fantastic. So I've got my phase relays. That's for my primary phases, A, B, and C. I've got a ground relay and a reclosing relay. Now we'll, find, we'll talk about phase relays. Please, notes, pay close attention. Phase relays open, I'll put it in big words, open the breaker. Okay, that's their only purpose. The phase relays open the breaker. The ground relay also opens the breaker. Guess what I got left? The reclosing relay. Guess what it does? Closes the breaker. Closes it. Okay. If A detects a fault, it's going to trip open the breaker. That's its only purpose. A, B, or C, or all three combined. That's their purpose, trip open the breaker. If I have load imbalance, we'll go back to that one because we talked about it a long time ago. If I have a high load imbalance, what conductor does that load imbalance follow? If I have high imbalance, what conductor does it follow or go down? Anybody remember? Uh, what conductors do I have? You've got A, B, C, and G. G ground, remember, is tied to our neutral. Okay. And which one is, there's a load imbalance. Uh, which one has the higher, uh, which one's taking the higher load? Doesn't matter. I'm asking okay. for which conductor takes the load imbalance. Oh, um, I'm saying ground? Exactly. Okay, so if I have high load imbalance, it follows the neutral, which is grounded. This mm -hmm. one can also open the breaker by itself. Got it. Okay, high load imbalance, ground. I don't have a fault. No fault on A, no fault on B, no fault on C. But my imbalance gets too high ground will open the breaker also that's why i have it right here all by itself and the reclosing relay closes the breaker okay any questions there which which relays open a breaker um the phase relay and the ground relay correct uh which uh, relay closes the breaker back it's the, the, reclo the reclosing relay. Excellent, excellent. Okay. All right. How many relays are there in a distribution breaker? Three 
Relays Three. total. Relays total. Three. Relays uh, total. Oh, relays total. No, I don't. Answer. How many phase relays do I have? Oh. Uh, you have three phase relays. How many ground relays do I have? You have How many ground you relays have five do I total? have? Five total. five total. I've got three yes, phase sir. relays. I've got a ground <laughs> relay and I've got a reclosing relay. How yes, many sir. relays are in distribution breaker total? Five. Yeah? Five. Correct. All right. How do, I mean, we'll go to this. We'll take a little break here. We might go over a little bit of time today. We've got a lot to talk about. Let me uh, unshare this. Get over here. All right, so let's do substation. AR circuit. B-R-E-A-K-A-R. Substation circuit. Uh, Let's try this one. Open image and new. Uh, all these ones that have copyrights on them. I'm not trying to stay out of trouble. Open image and new tab. Bam. And screen one. Sure. Okay, I've got an image up here. How do I know? by looking at it, just by visual observation, that this is a circuit breaker. What are, what are some clues? Uh, it's an enclosed, it's inside of an enclosed box. So is a transformer. Okay, it's got a... Anybody can chime in here. Just think about oh. it a little bit. Well, it's next to a, a device, you know, and that thing. Uh, well, th that pickup, yeah, that's a device. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I've uh, got breaker protection for the pickup? Yes. yes. That breaker is protecting that pickup truck. No, no, no. the breaker is okay. not protecting the pickup truck. No, uh, no. I'm sorry. it's okay. the, the electrical oh. devices. Right. Every electrical device should have some sort of protection device. Yeah. For you guys that are working on your presentations, think of this. Let's try eliminating some stuff. I've got to transform the substation. How big are the bushings on the 115 kV side? How big are they? They're huge. They're huge, right? How big are the bushings on the distribution side? I mean, yeah, I couldn't even, yeah, some of them I couldn't even see over the top of the transform. So they're relatively small. Let's take a look at this. Let's take a look at this right here. Are these equal sized insulators? Inbound, yes. outbound. Correct. That is your major clue right there that you have a circuit breaker. The voltage in is the same as the voltage out. Got it. So this is definitely not a transform, right? That is your the major part of your clue. Another part is, of course, you've got a control panel to open and close it right here. And then these cylinders right here, this is, what, this is where you make and break load inside of it. Uh, let's ask this while we're sitting right here because it's so pretty. Do I need CT in this breaker? Yes, sir. Where are they at? They're uh, at the bottom of the uh, lightning arresters. Where's the lightning? There's no lightning arresters on this. Well, what are those things on the top? These are insulators. Okay. Okay, these are the insulators. Insulator inbound, insulator outbound. There's no uh, lighting protection here. You're talking about this ring right here, correct? Yes, sir. Okay, there you go. So I've got current transformers coming in, measuring, mm -hmm. current transformers going out, measuring. Good example. All right, let's get rid of this one and see if we can kind of trick you up a little bit. Bam, open image and new tab, bam. Make it bigger. Mr. What, what? What's the purpose of those insulators? If I take the wire and put it directly to the tank, it's gonna blow up. Okay. 
Um, what's, the, what's the purpose of an insulator we have in a cross arm? Um, it, it's uh, for uh, probably for like over voltage or over current protection. You need to insulate the tank, which is grounded, correct? Correct. From the, from the voltage that you are using. There's your insulation. Got it. Okay, good. All right. Uh, circuit breaker or transformer? Uh, that's um, uh, circuit breaker. Right. One per phase. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's one per individual phase. Good job. All right. Let's see. One more. If I can find you. Oh, perfect picture. Open image and new tab. Circuit breakers or transformer? Circuit breakers. Perfect. Perfect. Okay. All right. It's 1047. So let's say we're going to be back here about 11 o'clock. Let's take another little break here. So I showed you the relays that were inside uh, the breaker itself. And you see, what do we call these here at the bottom? What's encased in here? CTs. CTs are current transformers. So we're taking a very high current and we're transforming it so we can go into this control panel and meter and measure it. And you actually see the cabling that's going on here. Here's the cabling coming off of it. That's getting that information over there. So how does the relay, where is the relay itself inside this breaker panel where does it get its information from? Well, it's getting its information from uh, the CT. Correct. All right. What other component in a substation can they get information from? We've got two types. We've got what? Oh, PTs. PTs, right. So potential transformer will measure a difference in voltage. Mm -hmm. And a CT will measure a difference in uh, current. Now, it's all got to do with load. Remember by our pictures, it's all got to do with location here. Yes, sir. So I'm measuring current in and I'm measuring current out. This is coming from the substation. This is going out to my lines right here. And whenever I see a difference in the two, I'm gonna open. There's no PTs involved here, all right? No potential differences involved. So I'm just, operation of this breaker is by uh, current only. If you remember in the substation, we had those PTs on the bus, then we've got PTs in the transformer. If we have a difference in voltage from our bus to the transformer, then the PTs are going to open up the ACI. It all depends on location. Okay, so stop that and share. All right. Now, Got that part, get this part. Okay, so let me go to a white screen. We're obviously not gonna be able to get through all of this today. Uh, so we won't have a quiz today, we'll not. Say that again, whiteboard. It'll probably happen tomorrow after we're able to complete everything today. I got a little long winded this morning, but obviously for a reason why. Okay, so I'm gonna draw my breaker back again. How many relays do I need? Five. 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 One, two, three, four, five. What are these ones on top? You got A, B, C phase. Right. You have your uh, ground. Correct. Right. And you have your uh, recloser. Reclosing relay. Reclose. So I'll just letter them like this. A, B, C, those are my phase relays. G is my ground relay. R is my reclosing relay. Yes, sir. Now the breaker itself has automation. What do I mean by that? Um, automatic, that it automatically acts uh, within a, uh, a given parameter. Excellent. Excellent answer right there. I can set up my breakers to do things for me so they don't have to be attended all the time. Okay, I don't, I don't want, I want my system to be able to sometimes uh, either isolate or self heal itself, <coughs> heal itself 
from different, different types of situations. So there's two different types and we're gonna call these operations. Now don't get these confused with fault type, fault and overcurrent. There's two different types of operation that can happen and occur inside the breaker. There's an I and a T. I stands for instantaneous. Instantaneous time, T equals time. And it has to do with the process of reclosing. None of the phase relays. Remember, what, what are the phase relays and ground relays supposed to do? Um, open or close the breaker. They uh, open the breaker. Okay. These have to be as fast as possible. Okay. We don't want to have any kind of a uh, timed thing going on to help to prevent damage that's out there in the world. All right. Reclosing, though, I, I can either have it instantaneously reclose or I can wait for a specified amount, specified amount of time for it to reclose. It all has to do with the reclosing relay. Now, can anybody give me a definition of, especially in the utility world, of what instantaneous means? Um, instantaneous means like right, like right away? Okay. Uh, with the newer technology that's out there today, and uh, the newer equipment that we have, uh, how many, and I'm gonna draw a sine wave up here. So we got a sine, whoops, part of it cut off. Got a sine wave here. How many times does this happen per second? 60 uh, revolutions per second. 60 times per second, we have the sine wave, 60 Hertz. The breakers that are coming out nowadays, and you can have them do this as far as with, we're trying to define instantaneous right here. They will open, right? An instantaneous operation for the phase relays and ground relay will open the breaker in three to five cycles. And that's what we mean by instantaneous. And that's in the newer models that they have today. So we're looking at if three cycles, if 60 cycles is one second, Three cycles is one twentieth of a second. Yeah, yeah, yeah. One twentieth of a second, guys. That's fast. That's and you want it to be fast, okay? Instantaneous pertains to three to five cycles. That breaker is going to open once it recognizes a fault. That's not good. okay. Now, an overload is a little bit different. We'll talk about that later. Time is specified by you. Or it's not by you, but as a person, specified by the company. Okay, uh, I'll, I'll give you the scheme that I, I know I've worked with. Professor V might have a couple different situations out there as far as working for Duke Energy. I'm going to program this breaker to have one I and <coughs> two T's. If if a fault occurs on my line. Okay, so what I am actually saying right here is fault occurs. The breaker is going to open immediately. And then what's it going to do? It's going to close. Close. It's going to open close real fast. And I mean real, real fast within the 60 cycle period. I can guarantee you guys out there at homes and something like this. Uh, a fault has happened out there, an instant, instantaneous operation has occurred and you haven't even seen it. Mm -hmm. The lights don't even go dim and bright, it is so fast, okay? The other open close, very fast. Okay. Timed operation means I'm gonna open, wait, close and you specify this wait time as to whatever your company wants to have it at 
okay? Typically, in a, in a system, I'm gonna get one I operations, I'm gonna get two T operations, and then the last thing, if the fault still remains, on my circuit, you're gonna have a condition called lockout, okay? The breaker itself is gonna give an indication and send a signal back to the dispatchers, I am now in lockout. What does lockout mean? Lockout means uh, the, uh, the section or device has been um, isolated and disconnected. Right, I'm done. Locked out. No more operations. Okay. And even though it's not really a lockout tag out procedure, it's going to take some type of human intervention. To restore power. Okay. So we know now operations, what they are, instantaneous in time, what an eye operation is, open, close, very fast, a timed operation, which is an open, I'm going to wait for X seconds, whatever you specify, then I'm going to close, okay, and I'm going to do that two times, and remember, this is all in cases if the fault remains on the circuit, so we're going to back up here a little bit and, and show you what happens in each individual one. All right, what are the two different types of operation? I and what? In time. Instantaneous in time. What happens when the breaker is finished with those operations? It goes to what? Lockout. And lockout is defined as? Uh, no more. Lockout. Yeah, lockout. No, yeah, it's not going to do anything any automatic anymore. And it's going to take human intervention to restore. Uh, instantaneous is defined as what? Three to five cycles per second. Three to five, three to five cycles. Not per second, not per second. Three, three, to, three to five cycles. Per within. 60 hertz or one twentieth of a second on the low end, one fourteenth of a second on the high end. Yeah. Okay, good deal, good deal. All right, so let's go over here. Let's clear this off. So I'm going to run you through a, a scenario. and give you the different factors of why we set up our breakers in a substation in such a fashion. So here's my breaker, just do this simplistic. Here's my circuit. I'm gonna draw just for sake here. So I have a fault. A squirrel climbs up, touches my primary line, touches the, a neutral or ground. What is the first operation? Breaker trips. Breaker trips open and does immediately what? Um, instant. So it opens open. instantaneously and then does what? Close. Closes and right away. If, and sometimes those aren't even recognizable, if that is long enough, and sometimes it is, for the squirrel to either be toasted or vaporized or fall away, does the breaker do anything more? No. No. So everything's copacetic, copacetic. Everything goes back to normal and the breaker resets itself to normal operation. All right. The squirrel remains. What happens to the breaker? It, uh, if the squirrel remains, it uh, opens. Well, the first thing it opens and closes. Then if the squirrel remains, it stays open. It opens, and now I'm going to wait mm -hmm. two seconds. And then what? And then close again? Close. Well, the squirrel fell away when I waited. It closed back, so everything is now back to normal, and everything resets itself. We're good to go. Mm -hmm. The squirrel still remains. Damn. Mm -hmm. It's a hefty squirrel. What's the breaker going to do? It opens again. Open. Now you can specify these times right here. I'm going to wait three Got seconds. Okay. I'm going to wait three seconds. This time it closes. 
But in that three seconds, well, really five, the squirrel fell away. Everything resets itself. We're good to go. All right. The squirrel <laughs> remains. What happens? It might. Uh, yeah. It's gonna. It's gonna. The circuit is gonna open. One it's more gonna time. open. And what? Okay. It's going to open, and then it might attempt, depending on how you program it, it may attempt to reclose. Or okay, you we said earlier, my system set up for three operations. I satisfied one, two, three. It's, it went to open because it saw a fault. So what's my last, what, what happens? It's going to stay open. Right, and do what? It's going to give you an indication of what? Of a fault. Uh, it's lock, gonna lock out. Lock out, yes, sir. Right, it's not gonna lock out. You know, it's gonna tell it's gonna tell the dispatchers this breaker is in lockout. The dispatcher is gonna tell you, hey Scott, breaker B out of Singleton Ridge, their their breaker's locked out. It kind of gives you an indication, it gives you a good indication. Whatever is on my lines is pretty hefty, it's caused some good damage, or I've got a line on the ground, you know, that's just constantly being closed and something's happened there. I can pretty much tell you now, they're gonna keep reports and let you know all the time. You're gonna get instantaneous operations on your feeder circuits in the power companies. You won't hear a thing about it, right? The dispatchers will know what happened, but if it instantaneous opens and closes, the power's back on, do they need to call you? Mm -hmm. No, the power's back on, right? If it happens too many times in a day, or in a month, they're gonna send you a report. Scott, this breaker's having a lot, a lot of eye targets on it. Can you patrol it and see if there's anything wrong? Sure, okay, right? The dispatchers, for us at least, Robbie, chime in if you've got something different. If it goes to a timed operation, he's gonna give you a call on the radio. Scott, breaker B out of Singleton Ridge, it's in a timed operation. You might wanna head that way. Right. Heads up, yeah. Uh, yeah, heads up. We got a breaker that's starting, it's in his timed operation. Look out, something might be wrong, okay? Uh, you start heading that direction of where that feeder line is, and uh, during the course of that, it closes and stays close. He should gonna tell you that. Hey, it closed back, everything is good, but you might wanna do an inspection on it. All right, it gets down to this last target. They're definitely calling you on the radio. We got a problem because this doesn't last very long, three seconds. And then he says, Scott, that breaker did go to lockout. You've got 2,000 customers without power. Okay, that's, that, I don't wanna say scrambling. That's when you start calling, you know, getting yourself on the road and you start calling the troops. Yep. Okay. All right, so that's how operations, INT tar targets are used. Now, uh, Depending on the cases out there, uh, Robbie, did you have anything different in Duke as far as your distribution system? As far as operations? Yeah, operation types. No, just a timed and instantaneous in ours. We didn't have, we, we used three timed operations instead of two. We went it, um, when it did the uh, instantaneous, then it went, it would open up again at five seconds and then mm -hmm. it would still had default. They would wait 15 seconds and then operate. And if it still had default, and it would wait 20 more seconds, still had default, then it would go to lockout. Okay, good deal. Yeah. Right. So, I mean, that just tells you guys right there, they had a different timing scheme. Correct. Okay, you, you can you could have it an IT lockout. You can have it T lockout. You can have it ITT. You can have an I T T T T T T T lockout. You can program them to whatever uh, you want to have them. And that's that's the way it was set up on those old electromechanical breakers. And then, of course, mm -hmm. a whole lot easier to change it up with the new electronic stuff out there. There's lights yeah. of breakers. So, yeah. yeah. So let's go over here. All right. We're going to watch a video here real quick. And it, this will give you some kind of indication of how fast these things are too. And these are electromechanical. These are some of the older ones. Stop that share. Share screen one. Let's start this share. 
Let me know when it's up. Got it. Got it. Okay. I, I, I can tell you guys right here, this is old equipment. Brown insulators. Brown insulators. That indicates old. Uh, this is the actual breaker itself. I've got wow. an inbound and an outbound. All right. It's insulated from ground right here. There's the actuator handle that opens and closes it. You'll see an oil window right here. That shows you got good oil inside of it. <clears throat> Circuit breakers allow the flow of energy to be controlled by safely switching currents on and off at all voltage levels of the energy grid. In the open position, they have to ensure isolation across the switching distance, between phases, and to ground. So this is what's happening inside the breaker as far as the connection points. In the closed position, they have to allow the energy to flow with minimum losses. They need to be able to reliably interrupt short circuit currents without damaging themselves or adjacent equipment, even after long idling times. What does he mean by long idling times? Any guesses well, there? Idling, uh, meaning uh, it's not really uh, it's not doing um, anything out of the norm. Yeah, so, yeah. I mean, really, if you have a good system, tree trimming is good, you know, wildlife protection, right. thing, you don't want a breaker to operate, right? It, it's there for protective purposes, but you don't want breakers operating all the time. You know, your people's lights are going to be going on and off all the time. Mm -hmm. So it might sit here. Uh, I, I know our system tested breakers once a year. But well, you might go an entire year where this thing doesn't open or close at all, which is really a good thing. Yep. Different circuit breaker technologies are in use, depending on voltage level, application, and the age of their design. Now oh, look at those glass insulators. Oh, I'd love to have some of those. Mm. Current interruption takes place in interrupter chambers containing air, Okay, we're getting ready to uh, make sure you either reference this video. I'm sure I'll probably bring it up again. Reference this video or write this down in your notes. Uh, we've looked at breakers and pictures and whatnot. What, and he said mediums, what extinguishes the arc? Um, it, it's uh, air. Uh, you've got air. Air can extinguish an arc. What else? Um oil oil perfect what else uh sand sand will not all right now there are sand fuses but sand will not extinguish arcs got it um so, so listen listen to the video here sh closely yes sir the interrupter and the mechanical drive are the main components back here how did i get so far forward i click on that Interruption takes place in interrupter chambers containing air. Air, that is one. Oil. Oil is two. SF6. SF6, we'll talk about uh, that in a little bit. Sulfur, hexa okay. sulfur hexafluoride, okay? Or a vacuum. Or a vacuum. Okay, make sure you've got that in your notes. Air, oil, SF6, or vacuum. Circuit breakers may use multiple contact systems consisting of main contacts and arcing contacts. The main contacts allow operating current to flow with minimal losses, while arcing contacts can break short circuit currents with minimal arcing erosion. <coughs> the braking element is usually operated mechanically by a stored energy system. You can see just how fast that is. And guys, if you're in a substation, working around a circuit breaker, uh, if you go to do substation breaker work, there is a lot, tons 
of mechanical force inside a circuit breaker. Mm -hmm. By a stored energy system. The energy that opens and closes the contacts is typically stored in a spring, hydraulic, or pneumatic device or system. The stored energy is released by the trip or the close command signal. The command signal activates the trip and close coils, releasing the drive mechanism to perform the opening and closing operation. Okay, that was not very much instantaneous, was it? That was an operation of open and close. Then the spring reloads itself. Okay, so that was an open-close operation. Watch how quick this was. Open, close. I mean, I could, that was probably one second's worth, wouldn't you think, Professor V? Yeah. Okay, so that was not that fast. This is older equipment. The interrupter and the mechanical drive are the main components that are subject to wear and aging. The thermal stress of load currents may cause corrosion and oxidation. And the interruption of short circuit currents erodes the contact system. Guys, that's a lot of current. That thing's huge. Some. Environmental stresses. Environmental system. I got a question. Do you see this connection point right here? This slides in and out. It's like a finger socket type thing. What's what's this made of? Um, it's made out of uh, copper. Okay. I want you to look at these connection points right here. What is on these connection points? What is the best conductor we have? Copper. Nope. Uh, the best conductor. We, uh, the best on that. Well, what was that, uh, Lucas? The best conductor in general? Yes. Oh, gold? Nope. Best conductor is uh, silver. Silver, right. Mm -hmm. Full construction of this is made of cop uh, copper. The connection points where it goes in the jaws, these are silver plated. And you can see the white silver Right there, silver plated. Circuit currents erodes the contact system. Environmental stresses, such as temperature, humidity, or contamination, affect the bearing and linkage surfaces of the drive. Ancillary components, such as bushings, are also subject to electrical stress aging. In order to ensure the proper operation of a circuit breaker throughout its lifetime, diagnostic tests are performed, such as resistance, timing, minimum pickup, travel, and power factor. Okay, a lot of stuff going on here. Really, what he's talking about as far as testing the breaker itself, which we did once a year on our breaker, was you want to make sure that it does the INT targets, it does those in a sufficient amount of time, and when they say pick up, you want to make sure that it recognizes the fault fast enough to operate. So that's all that data going on right here. We're not going to get deep into testing. In order to achieve the best safety conditions for the test engineer, the circuit breaker should be grounded on both sides during most of these tests. All right. I just want to, and this is as far as we're going to go with it, because like I said, you're not going to be relay substation testers. Where's my two visual open points? One's right there. Well, it's not open, but it's closed, but. It's not open, but it's closed. All right, do you guys see any wire going to the breaker? Into the breaker? No, to the side of it, yeah. I, I mean, in, the actual feed in, feed out. Oh, no. They took the wire out. There's their two visual open points. Okay, so I mean, different technique, but they still had to follow the same rules. No conductor in, no conductor out. I've got two visual open points. I can work on it. Okay, so let me stop that share. All right, 
Professor V, I've got 11.30. Yep. What you think? Okay. Mm -hmm. Stop it there. That video is over. Okay. All right, guys. Have I filled your heads up enough for today? For today? No. I mean, I learned a lot. You know, learned a lot. Okay. It's good to know this situation. Good. There is uh, one more thing that we're going to go through here, and this really has to do with your safety and how breakers operate. So let me do it. Hey, Mr. Schumacher, I got a question. Yes, sir. Uh, is it online or outside tomorrow? Online. Okay. Online. We're going to finish this up. This is one quiz that we're working through right here as far as the information. So it'll be online. We're about halfway, maybe a little bit over halfway through. We'll finish that up tomorrow morning. Then we'll give you a quiz tomorrow for you to complete by midnight Friday night. Okay. Yes, sir. All right. So one more portion here I'm going to give you. And this has to do with your safety. You guys need to be aware of this all the time. Okay. So I'm going to put my breaker back here. I'm going to put my circuit out here. That's my feeder circuit. And here's my open switch. Here's a tap line going down here. I'm attaching. In normal operation, my breaker up is set up in automatic. When I have it in automatic operation, I've got I, T, and T targets. We all know what those are now. We just discussed them. What do I need to do if I'm working on the line? I need my little bucket truck here. Wow, this is pretty nasty. And I need to uh, replace an insulator on a pole. Do I want the breaker to be in normal operation? No. No, right. If something happens here, what's the breaker gonna do? It's gonna open, it's gonna close, it's going to open again if I'm still wrapped up in it. It's going to wait some time. It's going to close. Okay. It's going to open. No, 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 man. I don't want that happening to me while I'm on the line. Do I? Mm -mm. Yes, sir. No. So what do I want the breaker to do when I'm working on the line? Do you want it to stay open? All right, you, if something happens, I want it to do an instantaneous open. That's 100% correct. Write them here. Uh, Professor V's got different terminology. I'll write that down too. Before working on any, any lines, before working on any lines, overhead, in some cases underground, you want to get a hot line work permit. This is for working in the vicinity of or on power lines. Hot line work permit. You can attain that from your dispatcher. You call your dispatcher. I'm getting ready to work on circuit 12 out of Singleton Ridge. I need to get a hot line work permit. He's going to confirm that with you by radio. I understand you need a hotline work permit on circuit 12. You're going to say that's correct. He's going to send a signal via what? SCADA. Yeah. Yep, SCADA to the breaker. And he's going to tell the breaker, I don't want to reclose. That's, that's pretty much it. All it does, it's very simplistic. Which relays open the breaker? A, B, C, and G open the breaker. Which one recloses it? Is it reconnecting? Yeah. Reclosing relay is the one that closes it. All this does in this, in this situation right here is when he sends that signal, it turns off the reclosing relay. That's all. That's all it does. Okay. The breaker is going to see a fault. It's going to open. I can't close. 
As soon as I can't close anymore, I'm not allowed to close anymore. It goes a lockout. That's it. Professor, what do you call it, dude? A hotline tag. Hot line tag. Okay, that's what they call it, dude. Okay. So if you're working, this is the safety aspect of it, guys. If you're working on or around energized, remember this is primary conductors right here. Here, the tap line, wherever. You're either going to obtain a hotline tag, a hotline work permit, or you're going to verify with your crew, hey, do we have a hotline tag on this circuit? Do we have a hotline work permit before starting work? Any questions there? Okay. Ah, stop sugar. Any further questions on today's learning process? Any further questions today on how we're going to get our information for our next quiz? Sure. Notes, paying attention in class, referencing videos and that transcript type deal? We yes, sir. Okay. No, I, I do have a question. What oh, would you do? Yes, sir. How, how are we going to get our information for our next, our next in incoming classes? We don't have any more incoming classes. Oh, no, no. You just said uh, for uh, uh, the, the incoming, um, I mean, well, from here on, are we going to be provided any extra documentations or? You never, what? Hold on one second. 